Okay, let's go and figure out what 346 times one half is equal to. And we're gonna figure this out in a few different ways, but one approach that we're not going to take to get the answer here is by just plugging in these numbers into our calculators. Let's put our calculators away and only use that calculator in between our ears, that supercomputer that we all have, and we're just gonna use our arithmetic skills. Now, uh, if you're currently learning arithmetic, that means that you're probably in elementary school, primary school, so that's awesome. But uh, many of you out there um, have learned these skills maybe years ago, right? Like for me, I was doing you know arithmetic back in the 1970s. Maybe for some of you, it's the 1960s, 50s, 80s, 90s, doesn't make a difference. It's probably been a long time so try to brush off those cobwebs and reason through the best way you can. There's not one way to do this problem. Okay, there's probably a common, maybe the most common approach to do this problem. But uh, I'm going to show you a few different techniques that are perfectly fine in order to figure this problem out. But anyways, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. And uh, just stick around for a couple minutes. You'll see um, a couple different techniques to get the answer. And you can see if you uh, took one of these paths to get the answer, or maybe you did it in a completely different way. As long as you've got, got the correct answer, that's really what makes a difference. But I'm gonna show you the solution to this problem in one second, then we'll go through a few different ways to get the right answer. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I love teaching math. It is my passion. And uh, I can tell you right now, and I truly believe this, all students can be successful in mathematics. But what they need is encouragement. But even more importantly than that, they need great math instruction, clear understandable and comprehensive. So if you need help in your current math course, if you are maybe getting ready for some sort of special test uh, that has mathematics on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you homeschool mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses uh, covering all these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave uh, links to my math notes in the description of this video, but you should be taking awesome math notes. This is a big problem for a lot of students. They just either don't take any notes or they take sloppy notes. I, I kind of did that way back when I was in high school, etc. But try to become a professional note taker. Everything is going to get much, much better for you in terms of learning mathematics by taking better notes. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer, and then we'll talk about different ways we can get this answer. All right, so 346 times one half is 173. Again, you know, we're talking about arithmetic here. And, you know, of course, for a lot of you, this is not that difficult of a problem, but if you got the right answer, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%, and a few stars, so you can have an extra special day. Nice job. Okay, so you got the correct answer. Nice. Matter of fact, if you didn't get the right answer, listen, I'm going to show you a few different ways. And all these uh, uh, techniques I'm going to show you, you need to know. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get into this right now. All right, so the first approach you can take to get this answer is to see that this is a uh, multiplication pro uh, problem and it involves a fraction. So you're like, okay, I'm thinking fractions. Maybe I, I want to think of this whole problem as a fraction, that's a good approach. So we're looking at this 346, you're like, well, I don't have a fraction and I'm multiplying by a fraction. Just remember, you can make any number into a fraction just putting it over one, okay? So 346 over one times uh, the fraction one half, this is a perfectly uh, fine way to do this problem. So the key here is uh, understanding how to multiply fractions. So how do we multiply fractions? Well, you're gonna uh, multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So this would be 346 times one, which of course is 346. And then we have one times two, which is two. Now at this point, you're gonna to wanna to reduce this fraction. So two goes into two, one, and 346, uh, two goes into 346, uh, 173. Or you can look at this as a division problem. You can be like, okay, uh, 346, uh, divide that um, by two and you'll get 173. Or you can reduce this fraction where you'll get 173 over one. Okay, so this is one approach is to recognize that, yes, you can approach this as a fraction problem. 
Okay, so if you didn't do it that way, um, well, you probably took a couple different other paths, but I would suspect that most of you probably took this approach. But let's go ahead and take a look at another approach. And I suspect most of you out there did, uh, did not do uh, this problem in this manner. But this is a cool little way to do basic um, uh, multiplication problems, and it involves the distributive property. So you can see I have the work here, but before I explain it, let me give you a nice, easy example of this work. Let's take the problem 2 times 10. Okay, so what is 2 times 10? Of course, 2 times 10 is 20. All right, now let's kind of uh, do something here. Let's do this problem. We're going to do it in a different way. So 2 times 10 is 20, but let's think of 10 uh, differently. Let's write 10 as 7 plus 3. Okay, so 2 times 7 plus 3. 7 plus 3, of course, is 10, right? So 2 times 7 plus 3. Well, the answer, because 7 plus 3 is, in fact, 10, should be 20. But let me show you how this works here. So this is 2 times 7 plus 3. There is a property. One of the most important properties probably in algebra, well, they're all important, but this is so, uh, it's one of the most probably commonly used properties, and it's called the distributive property. Basically, what it says is if you have a number and you're multiplying it by a sum or a difference, you can distribute that number, i.e. multiply it by the numbers on the inside of the parentheses. So let's do this now. So 2 times 7 is what? 14. Now this is an addition problem, so we're going to put a plus right there. And then we have 2 times 3 is what? 6. 14 plus 6 is 20. Okay, so again, 2 times 10 is 20. 2 times 7 plus 3 is 20. But what we're doing here is we're applying the distributive property. It's super handy property. You use it almost continuously in algebra, but you can use it in arithmetic, and it's like super awesome to use this property to solve problems like this. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can do this problem. So if we have 346 times 1 half. Let's write it this way. 1 half, well, we'll do it this way. Let me write it like so. 1 half times 346. So just like I took that 10 and I broke it up into different numbers, and the numbers I can break this, uh, for example, 10 up. Let's let's go this way. 2 times 10. I broke that 10 as 7 times 3. I could have broken it up as 5 times 5 or 1 plus 9 or 5 plus 5. 1 plus 9 is uh, 7 plus 3. I could break it up in any way I want to. Okay. So let's break up um, 346 this way. Now, I'm going to use nice, easy numbers here because I know that I can work with these numbers uh, by multiplying by 1 half. So 1 half, uh, 346 will express as 300 plus 40. 300 and plus 40 is what? 340 plus another 6. This is 346, right? So again, I could put 100 plus 100 plus 100. It doesn't make a difference. I'm just trying to work uh, with super easy numbers. Now I can use the distributive property and I can go, all right, this one half times 300. What's one half of 300? Okay, most of you be like, oh, that's 150, right? So one half times 300 is 150. One half times 40, what's one half of 40? It's 20. And then one half of six or one half times six is three. And what do we have here? 150 plus 20. We can do this math in our head. That's 170 plus another three is 173. Okay, so this was a, um, uh, an illustration of the distributor property. Super awesome property. And again, uh, it can be pretty handy when you're doing uh, multiplication problems, right? Don't forget these properties um, that you learn in algebra because you can kind of uh, go backwards and do arithmetic, right? We learn arithmetic like fractions and stuff. That's really critical for your success in algebra and more advanced mathematics. But as you learn properties like the distributive property, typically we kind of really learn that in algebra, you can kind of go back and do arithmetic problems using that particular property. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do this problem one other way. And there's probably different ways you can do this. I can't think of any right off the top of my head because I just put this video together quite uh, quickly. But uh, let's talk about decimals. So let's look at this problem, 346 times 1 half. Well, I can uh, write this um, fraction as a decimal. Now, uh, hopefully you recognize uh, the fraction 1 half as being equivalent to the decimal 0.5, right? How do we say this right here? 
with place value. This is called right here five tenths, right? So five tenths. So uh, this could be reduced down to one half. So the fraction one half is equivalent to the decimal point five. Now, uh, one way you can convert um, uh, fractions into decimals is divide the numerator by the denominator. So that's kind of like the formal way. So if you had like 37 over 50 and you wanted to know the uh, decimal equivalent of that, you would go into your calculator and take that 37 divided by 50 and you would you know basically get that because that would be kind of a real pain to do by hand. But uh, <clears throat> anyways, um, not to be kind of overly uh, redundant here, uh, that one half is equal to 0.5. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is falling off here, but I'm going to keep going. If you're uh, kind of willing to continue with me, let's keep uh, plowing forward here. All right, so we have 346 times one half. That's equivalent to 346 times 0.5. So we're going to look at this problem as 0.5 times 346. So my question to you is, do you know how to multiply decimal values, okay? Again, you learn this way back in uh, elementary school, somewhere around maybe the fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, but most of us forget this uh, or what to do here because we're always using our calculators. Don't feel bad about using your calculator, by the way. It's a tool, but... You know, I put these videos together uh, so we can review arithmetic, so we don't forget this stuff, right? It's important because if you lose your calculator or you lose your phone, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to have to rely on good old-fashioned old-school uh, paper and pencil. All right, so let's talk about how to multiply 0.5, which is the same thing as 1 half times 346. All right, so uh, when you're multiplying... Uh, values with decimals in it, first thing we're going to do is just forget that these uh, numbers here have any decimals. So we're just going to treat this as 5 times 346. So let's figure out what 5 times 346 is. You can see I'm just doing this the old school way. So here we go. So let's just review this. So we go 5 times 6 is 30. We're like, okay, we're going to put the 0 there. We're going to carry the 3. And then we have 5 times 4 is 20. We're going to add that 3, so now we have 23. We'll put the 3 there and carry the 2. And then we're going to go 5 times 3, that's 15. And then we're going to add the 2, which is 17. So we get 1730. So this is looking like 173, but right now we have 1730 is our answer. Now we have to address the decimal part of this problem. So how do we do that? Well, here's 0 0.5. Here's uh, 346.0. Basically... What you want to do is look at any values where the decimal point is away from where it normally would be as like a whole number, right? Like 7 is the same thing as 7.0. So that's perfectly fine. We don't have to adjust for, uh, decimals with this. But this point 0.5 is moved over one point, okay, away from where we would want it to be as like a whole number. So we're going to have to make one adjustment, one decimal point adjustment to the left. So 1730. We're going to take that decimal point and move it over one to the left. So we get uh, right here, 1.3, uh, uh, 1730, excuse me, uh, 0, 0.0, right? We're going to move it over one to the left. That's 173.0 or 173, which, of course, is the answer. Now I'm kind of explaining this in an uh, informal way. So let me kind of wrap this up by saying that there's different ways to you know, do math problems, especially in arithmetic, okay, different creative ways. So I would suspect that most of you probably did this problem the first way, just saw this, uh, you know, as two fractions. And that's the way I would normally take, you know, take to um, find an answer uh, to this particular problem. But, you know, don't be afraid to use decimals or to use the distributor property as well, okay? Uh, so hopefully this is a good review of some basic math skills that maybe most of us have forgotten. Now, if you are interested in relearning arithmetic and kind of, kind of getting in touch with all that basic math stuff that you uh, forgot so many years ago, let me give you a couple suggestions. One, I have a lot of different uh, basic math videos on my YouTube channel, but I have a great little mini course. I call it my Math Foundations course. It's a three-chapter mini course. It's going to go through all, uh, basically the basic math in elementary school, uh, fractions, positive, negative numbers, percents. It's an excellent little uh, kind of starter course for those of you who are interested in relearning re mathematics. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.